Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Hello, welcome back to Rooks Hamawa My name is Rukai Muhammad Saleh So if you are a channel subscriber, I thank you so much for being here And if this is your first time on my channel Thank you so much for clicking to watch this video I hope you will be with me till the end of the video And don't forget to be part of the family By clicking on the subscribe button and the notification bell Beside it so that you can get notified Whenever a new video is being uploaded So this is the part 2 of my Ramadan video And I think my Ramadan there is video and so yeah i'm going to be sharing also with you tips that can help improve that can help us improve ourselves in this ramadan because ramadan is not a time that we want to waste this is a period that we want to make the most out of it so i'm here to share with you and with myself and you guys a few tips that i feel like that i believe they're going to help us throughout ramadan so let's get right into the video so the first tip that I want to share with you, before I share this tip with you, I have to tell a little bit of a backstory to this tip. So um, earlier, I think last month, or yeah, I think it's last a month ago. I can't really remember the precise timing, but I think it's a month ago I came across a sister. And I was so in love with her platform. She has this um, Dean sisters, it, they have a... a they have a telegram group and also a whatsapp group and they do a lot of stuff they do a lot of benefiting inspiring stuff that probably you would want to be a part of and it's only for sisters so they have they organize this um weekly programs that they hold and also they have a one month i think for every last friday of the month they have also a program a, a, a google meet program that they hold and whenever you attend that it's probably you feel up uplifted every time so it's all about so this sisters is just a platform that is about sisters coming together it's a safe space for sisters to come together relay their problems where they are where they come short and where they can improve on the on themselves and just sisters they just give you advice and it's not for people who are extreme trust me because when i was reading when i first got into the group i was reading i saw a sister giving her testimony or yeah a testimony i would call it that she thought the sisters were about sisters was about sisters that were too extreme in the religion and when i was and when i was in there and when i was a part of their um their program that day i felt really uplifted i felt really safe and at home because it's a it's like a support group for sisters that you can just come around talk about where you feel like you want to improve and they are going to help you with ways that you can improve in your spirituality in your in any way you in any way you want to improve yourself in the day so when we were when we had the last session i think it was uh two weeks back can't remember the time. Yeah, I think it was two weeks. Two weeks ago, we had our last session because of Ramadan, so they had to like you know put some uh, programs on hold till after Ramadan. So it was all about how she asked us a question: What do we want to achieve in Ramadan, and how do we plan to achieve it? Everyone was like, "I want to improve on myself. I want to be closer to Allah. I want to improve in my sp spirituality." A lot of stuff. Almost all the answers were down to these things. So she asked, "How do you want to achieve them?" people were giving out their ways they feel like they can achieve them some people are asking for how are asking for tips on how to achieve them and also i grabbed a few tips from there and also i want to add a few tips from mine so one of the tips that i the first tip that i want to share with you is as a star suggested having an, an, account, an accountability partner in ramadan we all want to achieve our goals we have a lot of goals we want to achieve we want to be better we want to improve on ourselves you know we just want to be closer to allah but sometimes in the process of getting closer to Allah, we kind of, you know, put pressure on ourselves that we come short of what of our goals. We kind of, along the line, we get tired, we lose focus, just as I have said in our previous video. So she suggested that we have this accountability partner. If you can have an accountability partner, what this accountability partner simply means is you have someone that you want to... You will share your goals in, that you want to achieve in Ramadan with. Okay, I want to do this. I want to uh, recite the Quran completely twice in Ramadan. I want to do this. I want to give sadaqah. I want to, I want to go into. I want to give back to the society. I want to do this. I want to do that. You can share with them. And every day you have set your own goals that you want to achieve every day. Every day you have what you want to achieve. You know, it's just like a list of to do, your spiritual to do list. And every day when you achieve them, you call on to that partner and you check it out. 
that's how it works and i felt like yeah this is something really good that you can do because if you have if you know that you're going to be held accountable for what you do you're going to report to someone and probably that person that you'll be paired with is not somebody that you know and you know with familiarity comes leniency and you know that you're going to report to this person that you don't know you would want to do your best like that in some kind of way helps you to you know work harder in achieving it even if you have not achieved a hundred percent of what you want to achieve that day you will push yourself to achieve 90 percent or 80 80 to 90 percent of what you want to achieve and that's a win-win you're helping them and they're helping you and it's not just one person you'll be accounted for one person no you'll be accounted for each other if you're pa paired with someone you will hold her accountable and she will hold you accountable for your own part so that's just how it works and i felt like it was really good so i feel if you can inculcate that into your day-to-day -day activities i feel like you will achieve a lot more you will focus yourself you'll focus on yourself more than focusing about other things unnecessary things and blah, blah, blah. the second thing i want to share with us is time management we want to plan our times no matter how hard you try to plan your time 24 hours sometimes you feel like it's not even enough for you right so if you can plan your day according to if you can plan your time according to how your day will go if you're working you know how you know how many hours you work during the day and you can just try to strategize what you want to do during the day and then you can work your way to achieving whatever it is you want to achieve that also helps a lot and especially for ladies uh i'd like to call on uh ladies attention or women or whoever is in the kitchen ramadan is not the time for you to perfect your cooking skills honestly i have heard from a renowned chef i have heard a renowned chef saying that in ramadan she doesn't even bother herself to make all these delicacies six seven dishes just for iftar she said she, it's wasting her time if you can meal prep if you have an availability of electricity meal prep just pack some things, freeze them, stash them away in the freezer and when you're ready to use them, you can make soups, you know, soups and stews, just stash them somewhere in the freezer and let them freeze and wherever you want to, you want to, um, you go into the kitchen, just bring them out, let them cool down and then just warm them up and you don't have to waste so much time in preparing food from scratch every day. Meal prep and that will definitely help you in, uh, in managing your time in Ramadan and also Ramadan is not a time for losing or gaining weight but a time to lose your sins and gain reward so you would want to make the most out of your time Ramadan is not a time it's not the time it's not a period for you to be wasting your time which brings us to the third point do away with anything that is unnecessary in your in your life in Ramadan what I mean by anything that is unnecessary the social media just in unnecessarily sleeping all day these things they are, they are not helping you in ramadan ramadan as i have said in in our in the part one of this video the time every second of it is golden you would want to achieve it because it comes once in a year and we get abundant results um abundant rewards in ramadan that is why and i keep saying this anything that is unnecessary especially social media you want to just well away time because the fasting is is hard enough it's so hot and you're staying all day indoors and you're just surfing on social media you can why not substitute it with something else take in some hobbies that are beneficial into your life like reading when you have recited you have done what when you have done what you want to achieve spiritually during that day and you have some time to to you know while away why not inculcate something that is beneficial to you like reading as i've said earlier you can put in um something there's a book by uh, um muhammad she is i think the founder of Din sisters or she is amongst the founders I, I i don't really know that well but she has this book reclaim your potential and i've started reading this book it is very like this book as i have seen the reviews and i also have started reading it i'll put in her link down below if you want to buy i think it's available the hard copy is available in a few northern states in nigeria Kanu Medukri Abuja and I think it's Kadura. I'm not too sure, but I'll put in her details in the description box also for you guys to, to if you want to order then you can just order it and she has soft copy as well. You can order from I think it's Amazon. You can just order anywhere around the world. You can order for that book and get and grab your copy. Reclaim like, Reclaim Your Potential is a book that she has put together and she has um testimonies from renowned people like Pen Ustas Pen Abdul. It's just amazing if you read that book it will help you in building in in building up your spirituality so 
Why not read books like this that will help you improve yourself, your creativity, your spirituality, your, me your mental health and everything instead of just dwelling away your time on social media. And this is not just for you, but also for me because we are all victims of this or sleeping the whole day. Yes, you need to take rest, but when you sleep the whole day, you are sleeping on the amount of rewards you're getting. You're sleeping on, the chances, on your chances of getting more rewards during Ramadan. And remember, our goal in Ramadan is to make the most out of it, to make the most out of every opportunity out of it. I'll be coming on to this nap later on, but for this, but on this point, it's not for us to sleep in on our chances of getting more rewards, but also hopping onto those chances and grabbing them and making the, the make and making use of it the most. You can also include journaling into your hobbies, and it really helps a lot. People who I am still struggling to to start journaling because I am a very messy journal. Like I, my journals are always messy, but. I'm still, you know, struggling on that path. So another tip that I want to share with us in Ramadan that will help us is do not forget your iftar and suhoor etiquettes. We are urged to hasten our iftar and delay our suhoor. Yes, it is a sunnah of the Prophet. And you can start, you can break your fast with with a date that is moist. If you, if you don't have that, you can, you can uh, look for the dry dates. And if you don't have that also, you can just break your fast with something as easy as a cup of water that's just easy you don't have to you know go for all these beverages sodas uh tea yes it's good for you to also um drink something a little bit warm not too hot but a little bit warm to warm your system during iftar that way you can keep it healthy and there are a lot of um scientific and health benefits of breaking your fast with iftar and also doing your fast with and also taking your sahur with a date and a cup of water and same goes for the sahur, it's all it's almost the same uh, sunnah, just a date. And for sahur, there are a lot of people that have problem with sahur. They say when I take sahur, I become the fasting becomes harder for me. Well, guess what? You don't have to finish a whole meal, you don't have to finish a whole meal in order for you to take sahur. Just a simple date, just one pair of um one piece of date or one sip of water can serve as a sahur to you. The, the aim is for you to put something by that something in your stomach at that time and you have to earn your sahur and by doing so you're also it's a bonus because you're following the sunnah of the prophet and Allah will reward you for following the sunnah of the prophet so please do not skip your sahur and hasten to break your fast and uh, uh, delay your sahur as well so I think that's it so one thing that we shouldn't forget also is the care the kid, for me, I feel like the kid is the easiest act of ibadah, honestly. Like you can just whenever, you know, sometimes there are times that you feel lazy, you don't even want to. Maybe you're too lazy to pray or you're too lazy to, you know, sit up or, rela or recite the Quran. Or you feel too lazy to do something to help out or do something. You know what you can do? The kid, because it only takes your tongue to move. It's only your tongue that is moving. So that's... And there are a lot of dhikr that you can do, you can inculcate into your daily activities. And dhikr goes with everything. When you're walking, you can be working and be doing dhikr. You can be walking, I mean walking to somewhere. You can just, anything, you can you can pair anything with dhikr because it's the easiest thing. And some of the beneficial ones that we were taught from the Prophet were SubhanAllah wa bihamdihi, SubhanAllah al-Azim, Hasbunallah wa ni'man wa kin la hula wa la quwata illa billah, Allahu Akbar, you can thank Allah, alhamdulillah. Subhanallah, a lot of beautiful dhikr, or just by sending uh, blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu So I hope you love this video. I think this is the end of it. I don't want to put in, you know, too much. I don't want to stash in too much information that it makes it becomes too much to handle. I just want to make it simple and easy for us to digest and just and also inculcate. And I hope and pray that this video helps you in one way or the other, not just you, but also help me. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in this life and the hereafter. May He grant us all the abundant blessings that are filled in this month. May we benefit from them. And may we also be amongst the, amongst those that will be favored in this month. Uh, Jazakumullah khairan for watching and thank you so much. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it, comment down below, like my videos. I really appreciate the support, everything. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, and I'll meet you guys in my next video. Ma'asalama, and also Ramadan and Iftar Mubarak. Ma'asalama.